is it uh, they have particular skills, they know how to crochet or what? And uh, then she said to me something that I think stands for her way of success. She said, the most important thing that I look for is whether a person is kind. <coughs> Kindness. And it really fell into my heart because I have been privileged over the past few years to watch this kindness at work. And it is with great pride that I look at this place and I look at the way she has nourished this uh, mm -hmm. ideal. Or it's not an ideal that she encourages people to be kind and that kindness is what the basis of the success. And that I feel <laughs> very moved by that. Fortunate people that walk in as um, a customer and a few years later was um, privileged to become a um, staff member. <laughs> and uh, Karen and Kathy and I were just talking about, you know, they I was in their learn to knit classes back in two thousand. And um, <laughs> and I remember when I was interviewing and Kit said, this will probably be the longest conversation we're ever going to have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because, you know, you just don't sit around. I mean, the shop is busy. You don't knit. You don't have a kind of long conversation. But she did ask me that question as we were going through. Do you consider yourself a kind person? You know? And it, 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 it's a tough question to answer about yourself. But fortunately, Kit has this wonderful way about her that, I mean, and it's because she is so kind and so giving and so considerate that it raises, you know, my level of what, how I want to give. And um, it's through that, it's through Kit's generosity and John's that we're able to give that to the community and to our customers. And we do get customers that come in all the time and say, you know, you make me feel good. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that's our goal, that's Kit's goal, which she has been able to transfer to us as um, employees. And, you know, it's a wonderful place to work. It really <laughs> is a great place to work. <laughs> to both Kit and John, to church <laughs> I mean, one way is that their store is conveniently located near City Hall, and so many times I come there just for consolation and a little hand holding because they are so sympathetic and understanding of the issues of the city, and and they make a contribution to to what's good about Winslow and Bainbridge Island. They really care about this community. There are other little practical ways I'm indebted. Um, with the help of Chani, their yarn has made 10 pairs of knitted socks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I am very addicted to tea, and I love to spend time hanging around John's collection of tea and buying my favorites uh, all the time. Now, tea doesn't make much of a dent in your home budget, but I brought Chani along. <laughs> There is a way to make a big dent. <laughs> and Chani is quite the knitter. And uh, so I do have one hope that comes out of this meeting. I hope somewhere in the audience there's someone with a financial or stock market background. Because I figure with the amount that she's leaving at that store, <laughs> if they had a common stock or a preferred stock that I could buy and take a little bit of dividend back, this would be a chance of recovery. <laughs> Oh, the socks. So I, I just want to hand it to the Church Mouth Yarks and Tea has done so much to build community on Bainbridge Island. Anytime you walk into the store, you will see people sitting at the table men, women, children, old, young. Um, they're knitting together and they're talking and they're bonding. Um, 
Um, when I think that, I think back on, I look at my life now, and I see that virtually all of my best friends are knitters I met at church now, and pretty much everything I wear every day is something I made from a church mouth. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder what I ever did before church mouth came into my life. You know, was I running around naked and friendless? <laughs>